Did you know that there is about $80 trillion of money invested in equity? And equity is, of course, stocks. Now, $80 trillion, that's a lot of money. But did you know there's about $100 trillion invested in bonds? $100 trillion, that's even more than in stocks. So if you take a look at those numbers, it would make sense to invest your money in bonds, right? But then again, when you take a look at people like me, I wouldn't be investing my money in bonds. I mainly talk about stocks and why I invest in stocks. If you really take a look at my portfolio, there are hardly any bonds in there. So it doesn't make any sense to be investing in bonds, or is it? Well, in today's video, I'll be showing you why or why you should not invest in bonds. Okay, let's get into the video. Hey, what's up you guys? Lucas here from XLWealth.com. Great that you join in today because in today's video, I actually want to talk about the asset class called bonds. Yes, we're not talking about the James Bond, of course, but about the bonds that you can actually invest your money in. And yes, you could also invest in James Bond, I suppose, in the movies if they open up their stocks. But okay, so before we go into the video, of course, if you haven't subscribed to the channel yet, be sure to hit that subscribe button because that's the way how we can grow our community together. Okay, so bonds, let me tell you this. Bonds is actually the other side of stocks. Well, because what are bonds? In the end, a bond is a security. And what kind of a security is it? It's actually just a debt security. The moment you're investing in a bond, what you're actually doing is you're being the person who has the money and you're loaning the money to a certain party who is issuing bonds. Now, who can be issuing bonds? Now, in most common cases, there are two parties who can issue a bond. The first party is a government. A government or a municipality can issue a bond. For example, the moment the government wants to build a football stadium, for example, instead of actually pulling the wallet themselves, what they'll be saying is, you know what, we need some money and who wants to give us some money to be able to build that football stadium that's actually what the government does and what you could do is you could say like you know what hey i got money left and um well i'm not doing anything with the money so you know what i'll just use my money i'll lend it to you as a government and what you could do is you could build a football stadium with it or lay certain infrastructure or build certain projects that you want to have done this is a debt and this is a debt from their end to you as a lender now in this case Having a bond, it's actually quite transparent. It's quite easy. Now, most bonds are quite transparent because you can buy bonds for $1,000 per share. It's as simple as that. Now, the moment you own a bond share, it's very simple. The party that actually issued the bond for you, they have a fixed interest rate that they will pay you back annually. This is called the coupon or coupon or coupon or however you want to call it. <laughs> they will pay you back each year with a fixed amount of interest rate. This could be, you know, somewhere between one to 5%, depending on how the market is. And since this is the government, we always talk about government interest rates. So if the government interest rates are high, most likely the government bonds will also be slightly higher. And that's the interesting part. So if the interest rates are you know, somewhere around two or three percent, the government bonds will also be somewhere around two to three percent. And yes, this amount stays the same throughout the whole period. And this is called the maturity. So the period of the bond, this could be somewhere from one year to maybe 30 year bond. And yes, in that time, what they do is they just pay you back the interest rate. So if you would invest a thousand bucks and the interest rate would be 3%, it's as simple as that. They would pay you 30 bucks each year on interest. And at the end of the bond, they will give you your complete initial investment back. Just like that, 100%. No extra, there's no capital gain, there's nothing extra like that. So the second party that issue bonds is called a corporate bond. A corporation would say, you know what, we're not going to issue more shares, but instead, you know what, we actually want to invest in something and we actually just need a certain loan. We need a fixed amount of money. Hey, who would like to invest in us? And they will issue a bond. And a certain corporation would say, you know what, we need, for example, like 250000 and hey, we're looking for people who would want to invest in us. And you can say, yeah, me, I want to do it. And then, of course, same idea again. They will say, just like the government bond, they will have a fixed amount of interest rate that goes back to you the moment you invest your money with them. And these are the two common types of bonds. 
government bonds and copper bonds. Now, like I said, just in a government bond, they all have a time span somewhere between 1 to 30 years. And this is what you'll see very often. The moment you stay with them longer, the interest rate will be slightly higher. The moment you stay there shorter, the moment, you know, for example, if it's a one-year bond, it, the interest rate will be lower as well. Now, why would you want to be investing your money in bonds? That's the next question. The reason for investing in bonds is very simple because in the end, hey, when we're taking a look at the stocks, we don't really know how the stocks will go as they are kind of volatile. But as in bonds, it's very simple. There is nothing really going up and down. The only thing is, hey, this is the amount of money that you lended me and this is the amount of money that I will need to pay you back every year again. Now, in most cases, you'll see that bonds sometimes pay you back in a month time or in a quarterly time or in half a year time or just annually. So there are different kinds of stocks. But the, in the end, if the interest rate is only 3% and you invested a thousand bucks, hey, it's either 30 bucks at the end of the year or 30 bucks spread over 12 months or so. You know, that doesn't make any difference there. So it's as simple as that. Then again, bonds really aren't that volatile. Now, sometimes you could have the idea like, let's pretend that you invested $10,000 in a bond that is making 3%. Let's just pretend that, okay? Just for the idea. Now, it could be that somebody else, a different government project is opening up and saying like, you know what? We'll give you 5% of fixed interest rate. Now, wouldn't it make sense for you to go from the one end to the other end saying like, you know what? Hey, this bond is paying me 3% per year, whereas that bond is paying me 5% per year. And the chance of them paying me back is kind of similar. It's just because of the interest rate this year have risen. Well, I'll tell you this, most likely you're going to move to the other side. But this is the interesting thing. The moment they have enough buyers, the moment they have enough investors, the price will go up of the bond. And this is called face value value the value of the face of the bond so instead of having each bond share or being sold for a thousand bucks all of a sudden they could be selling this off for 1200 bucks so just you know all of a sudden you want to buy a bond share and it's more expensive whereas when the interest rates are lower they'll actually attract you by buying the other one because hey so why would i want to buy the three percent bond compared to the five percent bond well what they do is instead of having the price of that bond of 3% at a thousand bucks per share, all of a sudden they could say like, you know what? We'll make the price of that bond share $900 per share. Now, instead of saying like, you know what? We'll pay 1200 bucks for a 5% bond. We could say, you know what? I'll spend 900 bucks on a 3% bond. So it's not as volatile as the stock market, but it does go up and down. And in that way, they do get investors interested in their own bonds saying like, you know what? Maybe you got to shift a little bit. But in the end, those people who invest in bonds are not the youngsters in most cases. Because it's very simple. Who would want to invest in non-volatile asset classes? Yes, those people who don't have that much money lying around anymore to risk it all. Those are the ones who kind of want to retire and say, you know what, I'm going to retire next year. So it's better to have my money safe that doesn't go up and down and swing a lot. And yet I do get my interest rate back. Because if you have, for example, a million dollars invested in bonds and you have 3% coming out, hey, that's still $30,000 in interest rates every year coming back. So hey, that is your return on investment every time again, the moment you invest in bonds. But the moment when you're young, just like me, when you're in your 30s, yeah, why would you kind of want to have your money lying around in a bond that just outbeats the inflation rate of that year? Yeah, doesn't really make any money. Therefore, I would say, yeah, it's not such a good idea to invest your money in bonds. But did you know the interesting thing is, the ones who invest in bonds are those people who kind of want to retire. Well, the question is, when do you retire? Because we have a few investors we know are kind of old and yet incredible. Take a look at Warren Buffett. He just turned 90 years old just a couple of months ago. So he turned 90 years old and is he investing in bonds? Well, if you take a look at his portfolio, the answer is no. He's not investing in bonds and yet he's 90 years old. Like, isn't it time for you to settle down a little bit and instead of, you know, investing aggressively in all those, in all those companies? Well, his answer seems no, I'm not. I know what I'm doing, so I'm absolutely not going to invest in bonds. When you take a look at the recent interview of Warren Buffett with CNBC, 
you'll see that even investing in bonds, when you take a look at the interest rates of a 30-year treasury bond issued by the government, it pays you about 3% of interest rate. But like Warren Buffett says, if you invest your money for 30 years, you already know that you're going to put in your money for 30 years. Why not just invest it in an index fund like S&P 500? Because that'll generate somewhere between 7 and 9% each year average out in 30 years time. So yeah, it doesn't make any sense, like Warren Buffett says, to invest your money in bonds. And yes, not even for a dude who's in their 90s. So yeah, investing in bonds when you're retiring? Mm, I wouldn't say that's a great idea. So let's take a look at Ray Dalio, a hedge fund manager. Now, yeah, he's doing a great job. He's 71 years old. Shouldn't he be thinking, you know what, I should prepare for my retirement. Oh, yet, is he investing in bonds? He even says it's a crazy idea if you want to be investing in bonds. So, then who is bonds for? And yet, if you really think about it, all those people who think, you know what, I'm going to retire, or I'm retiring soon, or I'm actually in my retirement now. They put all the money in bonds. This is why bonds have over $100 trillion in them. And yet, we're thinking, you know what? People who know what they're doing are absolutely not investing in bonds. Well, that's my reason why I'm not investing in bonds. So my question to you is, will you be investing in bonds or will you be hitting that like button? <laughs> of course, you'll be hitting that like button and thinking about your own choices if bonds fit your portfolio. So am I going to be in bonds? No, I don't think so. But okay, don't worry too much about it. Investing in bonds, it's not a bad idea. The question is just what fits your investing style. Okay, thank you very much for watching today's video. If you liked the video, of course, be sure to hit that like button. And of course, if you want to be subscribed to the channel, be sure to hit that subscribe button because that's the way how we can grow our community. And of course, if you want to be notified every time a new video comes out, be sure to click that notification bell. Thank you very much for watching and I'll see you on the next video. Bye-bye and happy investing.